What is up, my diamond handed friends? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So, today we're going to be going over 10 stocks to buy right now in the stock market. And I also want to go over what happened last week in the stock market, quickly breaking down some technicals on the SP 500. And as always, we're also going to be going over where my head is at overall as a trader, as an investor. Am I buying heavy in the markets right now? Am I selling stocks? Am I being a bit more conservative? I want to talk about a bunch of things today. So if you guys find value, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to go down below and join the Strive Smart Discord chat, the Facebook group. Get four stocks from Webull and 30 bucks from M1 Finance. All of those are free and linked right down below in the description box. So let's get into it, guys. Let's have some fun and start the video like always, like every Sunday we quickly break down the markets then get in to the top stocks let's take a look at the s p 500 what we see right here is a market that was a bit toppy it was a bit frothy it still is quite frankly but last week it was very overbought we can see on this four hour chart the s p 500 index was right at the top of this channel and if you guys have been watching the youtube channel here my youtube channel for a couple weeks we've been talking about how the s p 500 has been trading within this channel like clockwork for the past couple of weeks and we said how it was not impossible but it wasn't extremely likely that the s p was going to burst out of this resistance and let's say go up to maybe four thousand thirty nine fifty we talked about how it was more likely on the other hand that we were going to see a bit of a sell-off here and that's that's why I made those videos last week, the past couple of uh, videos too, talking about how the market needs a pull down. And we finally got it. We got a bit toppy, like I said. We hit 38.70. That was an all-time high. Obviously, you guys can see that. And then we ended up seeing a couple of big days of selling last week. You can see that here on the five-day, five-minute chart. You can see 38.70 was hit. And then we had three straight days of selling, a big gap down on the 27th. We saw a bit of a recovery on the 28th, but then we closed on a very big downswing on the 28th, and that downswing continued into the 29th, and you guys can see we hit under 3,700 on the 29th. We hit 3,694. That was the low, and at this point in time, we could see more lows. We really could. The bottom, I don't know if it's quite in yet, and we'll see what the futures market is looking like here in a little bit it actually opens up at 6 p.m eastern standard time and i'm actually filming this video at 5 30 p.m eastern standard time so i'm not sure if we uh will be able to see the futures in this video but either way you guys have to check the futures out if they're heavily in the red hey, we could end up seeing a bit of a sell-off tomorrow, especially if the futures are still red in the morning, in the pre-market, and if the large cap stocks are not looking too pretty pre-market. That is where we could sell off, and overall on the four-hour chart here, that is where the S&P 500 could get closer to that 180 SMA on this four-hour chart, right around 3650, 3660. That is where I think we could be going this week. Like I said, I don't know if the bottom's quite in yet. And based on the five-day, five-minute, it's not. It's not. We're still in a downtrend in the past three days. And uh, the bottom, again, it's it's not in yet based on these technicals. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? And if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to go down below and hit the like button. Make sure to also subscribe. That really helps me out as a content creator. And it actually pushes my videos out more to other people. If you guys subscribe, comment comment especially and hit the like button so just know if you guys do that i really appreciate you all and now let's get into these 10 stocks and before we even talk about these 10 stocks let's go over quickly what are the big companies that are reporting earnings this week and let me tell you guys last week was a big earnings week this week is just as big if not bigger we have amazon Alibaba, UPS, 
Pfizer, Chipotle Mexican Grill, which I haven't had Chipotle in at least a year at this point, and I truly miss that place, guys, no joke. EA, we also have Google, PayPal, Spotify, AbV, which we'll talk about that one later on in this video. That one's down about 10, 12 bucks from its peak. On top of those, we have Qualcomm, eBay, Pinterest, Snapchat, Peloton, one of the, you know, best stocks out there, at least in the past year, Peloton, and Activision Blizzard, which we'll talk about here in a second as well. And again, if you thought earnings were crazy last week, well, you're in for a surprise because they might be even crazier in this week. So watch out for all of those companies. Now let's break down 10 stocks, some of which are in the list that we just talked about. Number one is Activision Blizzard, and this is the last one in that earnings this week list that are reporting earnings this week. And this is a video game company. This company has been breaking out and actually it's been pulling down recently, but overall it's been breaking out of this, uh, you know, downwards channel on the four hour chart. And if you guys followed my YouTube channel for a couple months, we actually called out Activision and I'm sure a lot of you guys made a good amount of money. But if you remember, we called it out. I called it out here on the channel as it broke out above $80, 82 bucks, as it started breaking out of the downwards channel here on the four hour chart. And ever since that point, you guys can clearly see it's gone from $80 to $84. It broke out of $85 filled the entire gap up to 89 90 bucks. I believe that was an all-time high. Let me double check here, guys. We filled that entire gap upwards. Yup, that was an all-time high. We broke out of $90, which was huge. And you guys can see we made a nice little cut pattern, broke out to about 96 And now we actually sold off. This past week, these past couple of days, as the market was a bit toppy, like we talked about a couple minutes ago, Activision got hit from $96 down to about $87. It trimmed at least 10%. Let me tell, uh, let me check that. Actually, no, more more like 8%. It trimmed 8 to 9% roughly on that pullback. And overall, on the four hour, you guys can see we're holding that 180 SMA at a higher low, which is great. But what's even better, we actually broke out and we closed above $89, $90, which again, that was a resistance from back in August. That was the old all-time high. So the fact that we pulled down, we held the 180 SMA at a higher low and we broke out of $89, $90, we closed at $91. That's a pretty strong close in my opinion. And now I would love to see Activision. It's not out of the woods quite yet. Honestly, I'd love to see it break probably 92 maybe 92 50 if it were to do that there could be a gap to be filled maybe up to 94 dollars you guys can see that resistance here and if 94 can break 96 dollars is coming especially with a pretty strong earnings report which again they are reporting earnings this week on the 4th of February. So watch out for Activision. This is one of many stocks out there that is finally pulling down a bit as the markets in general, again, they are pulling back. So I'm watching that ticker symbol ATVI. Amazon is another one, which I'm not even going to say it's arguably the most exciting company for this week. It is the most exciting company for this week. No doubt about it. I cannot wait until Amazon ends up reporting their earnings. And if you guys don't know, they report earnings on Tuesday, on the 2nd of February. And by the way, I hope you guys all had a great January. I hope you guys have an even better February. Let's go. Let's get after it. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to start February with Amazon and all of these companies reporting earnings. And based on the chart here, we're seeing a bit of uh, a bit of struggle, a bit of a, a struggle point here for Amazon at 33.50 to about 33.75. You can see that was a resistance back. Well, it was actually way back before um, October. It was a resistance back in July, back in September as well, also in November, and even more recently in the end of December. 
And in really these past couple of days, this has been a resistance at about 3350, 3370. And now at this point in time, we're trading at about 3200. It seems like the Amazon, the Amazon, Amazon is holding a higher low here. It's trying to at least. So I would love to see if Amazon into the earnings report could maybe fill the gap back up to 3300 maybe 3350 I think that is a nice window to trade uh, Amazon here. And even higher than that, I believe over time, and I'm not sure, well, obviously over time, it's going to go above um, 3400 3500 I, I definitely believe that. But even in the short term, let's say they report good earnings, maybe a week or two go by, I think ultimately we're breaking out of 3400 3370 and we're going to fill the gap up to 3500 meaning that this price right here at 3200 you could argue it's a steal for Amazon I don't want to say that it's a 100% you could make money playing this but out of a lot of stocks out there, this is one that I feel more comfortable, let's put it that way, swing trading, which is why it is at the top of the list for this video. So watch out for it, guys. 3200 to 3350, 3400, 3500. That is where Amazon is going, definitely in the long term, no doubt about it. And it could even do it in the short term as well. And again, watch out for that earnings report here on Tuesday. And now let's talk about an ETF that I personally own and that I actually like here as a long-term investment, which I own it as a long-term investment and as a swing trade. Now that I'm looking at the technicals, you guys can see on the four-hour chart, it's been uptrending. This ETF is ticker symbol DGRO and it's a beautiful uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows. We just hit an all-time high at $46. Now we pull down, we're holding $44, right around that 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. That's a pull down of about 4 or 5%. And this is one that, yeah, you're not going to make a killing on it. I don't want to say you're not, but if you're looking at it as a short-term type of bounce-back trade, you're not going to make millions of dollars, depending on what you're playing with. But this is more of, you know, a I don't want to say safe, but I kind of like this. If the markets bounce back, I think this could be a nice bounce back play. That's kind of what I'm going for here because they own a lot of companies. Their top holdings include Microsoft, Apple, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Verizon, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble. They're in 20% tech. The top three holdings here, um, or the top three industries rather, are uh, tech with 20% of the ETF, financials with 19% of the ETF, and healthcare with about 16%. So I like this one. It gives me some tech exposure. It has industrials as well, you know, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, financials, healthcare. I like it. So I'm looking at this kind of as, okay, if the markets do bounce back this week, next week, this could be a nice play, probably back up to 46, maybe even higher, $47. So I'm watching DGRO. And again, guys, this is not a stock. This is an ETF. It's a basket of stocks. And if you guys don't know what an ETF is, go on Google, type in ETF, maybe type in my name on YouTube, StaSurfest, ETFs, and you'll see a bunch of videos that I've made in the past. I have a big catalog of videos. If you guys ever want to look through the videos, I've made over a thousand YouTube videos on this channel. Go check it out. I'm sure you'll find something that um, you could learn from, especially if you look through the playlist. So go check Check out the playlist, all the old videos on the channel if you guys want to. And now let's talk about stock number four, which is good old eBay, ticker symbol EB. A Y and this stock just brings me back to the days where I was one of those eBay hustlers. I still I still sell things on eBay here and there. It's kind of like a side hobby. I don't even want to say it's a hobby, but it's just something I do on the side sometimes if I find something I want to flip or I know I can make some money. I put it on eBay, um, but I don't do it as much as I used to. A couple years ago, I was heavy into that scene, you know, flipping shoes, flipping 
flipping supreme, all that stuff. eBay is what I used back in my college days and my high school days as well to make some money, you know, flipping all these different things. And yeah, it was pretty fun, you know, flipping all that stuff on eBay. But anyway, the stock here is very similar, not not 100% similar, but kind of to what we saw with Activision. You guys remember Activision? It was a downwards channel. Then we broke out. We hit all time highs right on Activision. eBay is very similar, but the only difference is it didn't hit all time highs yet. We're seeing a downwards channel. We broke out of it. We're making higher highs, higher lows, all that good stuff. The uptrend is looking great. And now the thing is, now we've been seeing a pull down. It hit $60. Now we're trading at $56.50. And the million dollar question is, is the pull down done? Or will it get to the low 50s? I think low 50s, if we get there, that is a very solid potential buy point for me. And as always, you guys must do your own research. But if I'm looking at eBay, I love it at 50 bucks. 52 bucks for a play back up into the 60s because that's where I think it could be going. I would love it there. And even here at about 55, 56, that could also be a play. But you got to be careful because you don't want to get caught in a bull trap. Let's say we hover at 56 tomorrow. We try and maybe get in and, uh, and then all of a sudden it dumps down, takes out the low from Friday. That would not be a great situation. That's why I kind of want to wait wait and see, okay, is it going to break 57, 57, 50? If so, that is where we could play it up to maybe 60. But if it doesn't break 57, 57, uh, uh, 57, 50, it might be going again to test those lows at about 55, 30. And if that breaks, that is where we could be going. Like I said, on the four hour chart, that is where we could be going lower 50s, 51, 52, maybe 53. So watch out for eBay, ticker symbol EBAY. Another one here is good old Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT. This is one that's down about, uh, what is that, 55 bucks, 60 bucks from its peak from 370 down to about 315. They report earnings here on the 3rd, so that's on Wednesday. And I like Spotify. If it can hold hold 315 or maybe even 307 310 this general area of support from back in the beginning of January if it can hold that point that is where I think keyword here think that is where I think the bottom could be at least in the short term maybe if we hold 307 310 315 maybe we can see a relief rally since the stock's gone down pretty quickly recently maybe we can see a spike back a relief rally maybe up to 340 345 is that too out of the question I really don't think so. So I want to see if this gap can fill. But also, guys, understand that it could fill down to the high 200s as well. Maybe if 305, 310, $300 flat, maybe if all of those levels break, maybe we get down to, to 290, 285, that resistance from back in you know July, back in September, also back in October. Maybe that's going to happen because this is the next gap that could fill to the downside. So watch out for Spotify. This dip is uh, is attractive, but we just have to be careful with the timing on this one and just wait and wait and wait for that good old confirmation. So that's Spotify. Another one here is AbbVie, which we also talked about here. They're reporting earnings on, let's take a look here, on the 3rd. So that's also on Wednesday. And what we see here with AbbVie is it's taken a big hit. It went from 79 bucks to 130 13 bucks. That's a big move in a short span of time. That's about 30% of a move. And it hit 113, and now it's cratering. It broke 107. It actually pretty much broke under 103, 102.50 as well. Or actually, it's right around there. I don't want to say it broke it quite yet, but I think if it breaks this support right where it's at right now, Expect a high 90s price on Abvi. Honestly, I think that's where it's going. Probably right around 98, 99 bucks, meaning there could be about 3, 4% more downside here. 
But that is what's going to be interesting. Let's say if it gets to 98 99 I think this is a great candidate for a relief rally, a bounce back play, probably from 98 99 maybe 100 bucks, probably back up to the mid-high hundreds. I think that could be a trade here on AbbVie. And again, they report earnings here on Wednesday, so always be careful. And one thing I must mention, you guys, some of you know this, but for the new people out there, I'm not really looking to buy these stocks before earnings and gamble on the earnings, you know, the price of the stock going up or down. I'm not looking to do that. I'm probably going to wait until after they report, and then I'm going to potentially buy these stocks, right? I'm going to look at the earnings report, EPS, revenue, the guidance. That's so important. Guidance is arguably the most important. And I also want to see the price action of these stocks after they report earnings, that is just what I do. Yes, you could make a ton of money, you know, playing earnings. You could miss out on a ton of money by not playing earnings. But what I've learned over my years of trading is it's uh, it's better to just not risk it, you know, and I'm just more conservative. That might be the reason. But yeah, I just don't like doing it. I've done it before. I've made money playing earnings, but I've also lost money. So hey, you just have to understand that and make your own rule book and stick to it. So that's what I'm doing. That is AbV. Google is another one, or shall I call it Alphabet, ticker symbol G-O-G. This is one that I'm super happy I bought in my long-term accounts, I started buying this, I believe, at like 1500 bought more 16 1700 and it's been doing so well. The stock just hit an all-time high last week at 1935 Now we're down exactly $100 from that all-time high. We're at 1835 That opened up about 5% profit potential, and based on the trend on this four-hour chart, Google, guess what? It is holding the uptrend. It's holding that 50 SMA, that 180 SMA. And generally speaking, you know, 1775, 1800, as long as this level can hold, I would maybe buy some, uh, you know, Google on the dip. Again, I own it in my long term accounts, but if I'm looking at this as a swing trade, I would love to pick up Google at about 1800, maybe high 1700s. We'll see. And they report earnings here on the second. So that is on. Tuesday, the 2nd of February. And how could I make a video without talking about GameStop, without talking about AMC? These stocks have been the talk of the town, along with many others, you know, Tootsie Roll, Nokia, BlackBerry, uh, just so many guys. But we're only going to talk about two in this video. One is, the first one, is GameStop, ticker symbol GME. And this is one that I made so many videos on last week. And go check those out, by the way, if you haven't. And if you don't know what's going on with GameStop, you want a simple explanation of how the stock went up so much, what a short squeeze is, I'll link a video down below going over exactly what What's going on in very simple terms that any beginner out there can understand that again is linked right down below in the description box and when we're looking at GameStop stock a lot of people are like okay is the short squeeze over well the truth is it might not be over. Remember, the short interest last week, and by the way, GameStop is the most shorted stock in the U.S. stock market. The short interest last week was 138%, maybe 140%, right around there. And I just checked it literally 10 minutes ago. According to HighShortInterest.com, GameStop short interest right now is 121%. So it's still over 100. It's not 140, but it's 121, which is still a crap ton. It's still over 100. And that means that they're still shorting this stock to the ground. And there's more shares being shorted than there are in existence. So this could very well continue to squeeze here. And the idea with GameStop, AMC, all of these stocks is diamond hands. Remember in the intro? 
bro, we were joking around, you know, hey, my diamond handed friends, you know, playing around. The whole idea is if you buy GameStop and you simply do not sell, that's going to drive the price up even more because these hedge funds, these big boys, the institutions to cover their short, they need you to sell so they can buy back the stock, right? So the idea here is everybody just buy and hold a share of GameStop, you know, for, for the cause. That's what a lot of people have been saying, you know, diamond hands, you know, GameStop to the moon, all that funny stuff. But that's what it means. You know, if you buy it, you don't sell it, they won't be able to cover, you know, it's going to be difficult for them. The stock's price is going to go up. And that's why people are saying diamond hands. And based on these technicals on GameStop, I mean, we're in this beautiful wedge. You guys can see the uptrends continuing, higher lows, but we're also making lower highs, again, putting us in this wedge. So I'd love to see tomorrow. This is going to be huge. Are we going to gap out of this wedge? Do we uh, open up at 350? Do we uh, go to 400 pre-market, open up and go 450, 500? If that happens, expect maybe another squeeze. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Or do we end up tanking under 290, you know, breaking the support of the wedge, maybe go low 200s, maybe back into the hundreds? That's not going to be too great. And you guys have to understand Robinhood and all these other brokerages that are restricting these stocks, they might mess around and, uh, you know, close the stocks down tomorrow again, this week in general. We don't know. That's always a risk. And uh, again, they they allow you to sell the stocks, which is it's funny, right? They allow you to sell the stocks, but you're not allowed to buy them. Or right now, you can only buy like one share of GameStop on Robinhood, which is nuts. So watch out for GameStop. And again, guys, don't buy any any of these stocks, especially this one, based on what I'm saying, GameStop could easily collapse. And I don't want you to get caught in that. But if you do your own research, if you do your own due diligence, do whatever you want. As always, it's your money. Do whatever you want. But I just be very careful. Same exact thing here with AMC. And if I were, I don't want to say which one's safer, which one's not, or which one's better, right? But if I'm looking at GameStop and AMC, and I'm sure some of you guys, I'm not sure if all of you will agree with me. Let me know down below in the comments. But I would feel more comfortable holding on to AMC right now. If I were to gamble between two these two, GameStop and AMC. I'd probably pick AMC because I feel like it's not as inflated, right? It still has Wall Street bets behind it, the community, the movement, it still has that behind it, and it still has a very high short interest. Not as high as GameStop. Again, GameStop was 121% short interest. This one's 79%, so it's not as high, but still 80% short interest. That still is a lot. And we'll see if more shorts pile in this week. We'll see as uh, how that number changes as the week goes on. But overall, I'm watching AMC. This is more of kind of a, a YOLO, a gamble play. But we could be squeezing up back to the high teens, maybe 20s, 25 again. Who knows, 30. There's people out there that say triple digits, AMC, baby, let's go to the moon. But yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen, obviously. And I'm not going to go on here and say, oh, that's going to happen, guys, because that's just me lying to you. I have no idea what's going to happen. And you guys must be careful. And the last one here is GDXJ. This is a gold junior miners play. GDXJ, you guys can see this if I pull it up there we go you guys can see on the four hour we are in this downwards channel and I am waiting so patiently for this thing to break out of 55 52 53 even I think this could be a nice breakout play um, closer to the 60s up to the 65 level and this goes hand in hand with the price of gold right so we need to see gold do very well and oh my goodness now that I'm filming I'm looking at this the futures market just opened there we go and the futures market is not looking good so this verifies what i said earlier in the video and pretty much for gdxj again look for that breakout here on the downwards channel but to wrap up this video now let's take a look at the futures this pretty much uh you know tells us that the lows for 
from Friday, they're gonna uh, they're gonna break. And in fact, we already broke them. You can see the ES, the E-mini S&P futures. They're trading at 36.70, and the S&P 500. Let's take a look here. Um, yeah, this this guy's is not looking too pretty. It took the lows out, no doubt about it. That's what I'm seeing here. S&P futures are down 0.9 percent. We have the Dow Jones futures. They're down 0.75 percent. And we have the NASDAQ futures. They're down almost 1%. So this is not too great of a sign. We could see even more red tomorrow, this week, based on these futures. And guys, you must understand, the futures could flip-flop, which is why you have to see what they look like pre-market and what the large caps are looking like pre-market, that would give you a better indication of what the morning of that day could have looked like, what the start of the week could have looked like. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that, guys. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts for this week? Are you buying stocks, selling stocks? What are the top stocks you're watching this week? And if you you want to join the strive smart community check out the discord chat the facebook group down below those are free to join and you could also get four stocks from webull those are valued up to sixteen hundred dollars and the way you get those stocks is you get your first two stocks once you sign up using my link and you get the other two stocks once you actually deposit a hundred dollars into the account. So go get those from Webull, four stocks down below. You could also get 30 free dollars from M1 Finance, also linked down below. All you have to do is open up an account, deposit any amount of money, and you get 30 free dollars. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, shoot me a DM on Instagram if you guys have any questions. Follow me on Twitter. Both of those are at StossSurfest. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck this week in the market. Markets. Peace out.